Hi there guys and welcome to the Watch Channel. So today we're going to talk a little bit about my recent experience going into the Amiga Boutique and uh, just give you a little bit of a, a sense of what it's like going in there if you haven't been in. For those of you who haven't watched the previous video, I did go in and just say, look guys, I'd love to be able to film in there. Uh, Peter, who I'd spoken to, was really, really kind and uh, was like, yeah, sure, come in. Anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, I uh, called up the store the day that I was going to go in and I spoke with um, David, who was the manager. He explained that uh, he'd spoken with Peter. Um, the unfortunate thing was they said, look, you know, obviously with security and things like that, we can't really let you film the actual boutique. Um, he was very apologetic. I was like, mate, you know, it's fine. Look, you're doing me a favor. Uh, but what he did say was, look, you know, if you would like to come in, uh, we can, uh, you know, have you sat at the uh, the back of the store and, uh, you know, I can talk to you while you're, you know, you're filming some um, uh, watches. And I'll intersperse some of the uh, footage that I got and I apologize in advance because the one thing I have learned by going into the Amiga Boutique is, is that it is great for looking at a watch with your eyes. It's absolutely shit when you want to take photos or video footage. So I apologize that the footage is pretty poor. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I, you know, I'm not a professional. Cut a long story short, as I said before, you know, uh, David sat down with me and showed me some watches that I'd asked to see uh, and was really, really kind. And, you know, I, I sort of initially thought that going into the boutique and filming watches was going to be the, the main portion of, uh, of why I was going in there. Uh, but it wasn't. I actually, uh, you know, found myself having a really nice conversation with David. And before I sort of talk about some of the specifics, uh, please let me relate that, you know, the comments that were made by David um, relate to, to him only. They don't relate to, you know, the official line from, from Amiga. And not that there's anything particularly contentious in there at all, but it's, um, you know, like I say, you have to respect the fact that it is a boutique and uh, he is representing the brand. And uh, like I say, my intent is to, uh, to not do anything that uh, jeopardizes that at all. So a uh, couple of things that he'd, uh, well, a couple of things we talked about and um, uh, the first thing was browsing so you know when you walk into a boutique uh, whether it be Amiga or Rolex or whatever it is you know uh, I don't know about you guys but sometimes I sort of feel a little bit uh, awkward knowing that I'm going in there and I'm absolutely not buying you know there isn't an expectation that you're a serious buyer you're there to uh, look at what are very very expensive timepieces and is a you know, uh, for some, a one-to-no-lifetime purchase. And uh, I found it really interesting, you know, that he said, we just, you know, when somebody comes in and they're looking at watches, we don't have any expectation that they're buying. We are just there to make that experience as pleasurable as possible. And we know that if we actually um, have a really good experience with somebody, then and it ingratiates them to the brand and it makes them feel more comfortable about coming back again. You know, walking in the store, asking to see two or three different uh, models is not, um, you know, coming with some kind of um, uh, uh, desire or requirement for you to purchase that watch. And I thought that was really cool. Another thing, and again, you know, I go back to the video that I made about the Rolex boutique experience or lack thereof. Um, and this isn't a beat up about Rolex and why Amiga is so much better or anything like that. Like they've both got their own uh, places. But what I can tell you is, the boutique experience at Amiga was very, very different. And I think their mindset is, is extremely different as well. Uh, and there was a couple of things here uh, that, that really struck out to me was um, David again talking about, you know, judgment on the way people dress. There's an absolutely no judgment or, you know, you rock up in your Hawaiian shirt or your shorts and a, you know, a singlet. You're treated exactly the same as the guy that goes in there, you know, with a Brioni suit just the way somebody dresses, or actually, if we're gonna be honest, judging a book by its cover is often a very, very um, silly thing to be doing. So again, really, really interesting. And some of the things that came across, not only with, with David, but also in the initial conversation with Peter, the experience that they want to deliver to people who come into that boutique is supposed to be, or, or they want it to be superlative. They want it to be absolutely befitting of the brand that they're representing. Their mindset about, and they said something really telling was, you know, we are here to serve you. It's not the other way around. We're here to present these watches to you and give you a really, really positive and uh, memorable experience. 
And uh, that's, again, I keep saying it, that's pretty cool. You know, you just, just having that, that mindset, I think, sets them apart completely. Another conversation point uh, that we had, and it was that with Amiga, no such thing as a waiting list. There is, um, you know, if the model isn't in stock, then absolutely they will take your details and the next available one, regardless of whether you've purchased previously or you've, you know, done this or that, that watch is then yours. There's no priority uh, prioritization or anything like that. It's just simply, if the watch is not in stock, let us know when we get it in, we'll call you and you can come and collect it. I'm pretty sure that, you know, unless you're after something really specific, um, then, you know, they're going to have it in stock or they can get it from another boutique uh, very close by and, and, like I say, you're not waiting months for it. Uh, last but not least, and I've said this before, is, you know, we talked about the topic of um, maintenance, so getting watches serviced. And, you know, that was a, admittedly a pain point when I'd mentioned it with Peter initially. And David echoed that, you know, it's just getting watches serviced uh, at the moment is a real challenge. I don't know whether it's COVID related. I, I think it's probably just a skills shortage thing. But, uh, you know, that was, you know, something I've mentioned in other videos about, you know, when you buy a watch, be aware that, you know, you do need to get these serviced at some point, And that can be both an expensive and time consuming thing. The, the experience at the Amiga Boutique that I had was absolutely fantastic. I'd just like to say thank you so much to David and Peter uh, at the Amiga Boutique for taking care of me. If you are interested uh, in uh, visiting their boutique, it's at Bondi Junction, Westfield. So thank you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. So if you do like it, please do consider subscribing, uh, give it a like, and uh, thank you for your time. Take care, guys.